Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Objective. I'm your host, Jay, and this is episode nine of Let's Talk Headlines. I want to thank you for tuning in today as we look at immigration issues. The date is March 28, 2017. Yesterday, Attorney General Jeff Sessions was at the press briefing, um, and he actually went over the executive order and some of the um, federal funding withdrawals that will be taking place in regards to sanctuary cities. Um, before we get into that, I want to look at an article that I actually read a few, uh, not a few weeks, but a couple weeks ago. It comes out of the Toronto Sun. And it's entitled Mexican Asylum Seekers Flock to Canada. And it seems like uh, individuals who are in the country, and I'm, when I say the country, I'm talking about the United States of America, illegally, now that President Donald Trump is in office and people see that he's actually sticking to his word, he didn't just say these things to get elected. He didn't just say these things to get hired for the job. But he's beginning to take action on some of the biggest promises uh, that he said he would fulfill. And what happens in America actually very intimately affects what happens up north. It says here, Canada is once again dealing with the surge in asylum claims from Mexico. It says in February 2017, uh, they saw an increase of 2,500% from February of the previous year. Uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau lifted the visa requirements for Mexican travelers in December 2016 against the wishes of some immigration and border security experts. And in turn, hundreds of Mexicans are now taking advantage of Canada's generous asylum program. So Prime Minister Trudeau, in all his infinite wisdom, went against the wishes of the immigration and border security experts and lifted the visa requirements for Mexican travelers. And it says it says here something that I really want to bring out about this whole topic. It says, in the meantime, these applicants are given full access to Canada's generous social safety net, including the controversial interim federal health program, which offers services above and beyond what Canadian taxpayers receive. With all these asylum seekers and some even trying to claim refugee status, this is costing Canadian taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars for the court costs, the welfare programs, uh, the deportation services, there is a cost to this. Immigration has a cost. In another article, I was reading um, that there are individuals coming from the Middle East as refugees, a few hundred, and that would cost approximately 28 million taxpayer dollars because a lot of these individuals are coming with um, social issues, health issues. And so we have to understand that there is a price tag with each head that enters the country. This is why we have borders. This is why we have countries, because a country without borders ceases to be a country. If people could simply just walk into a country do what they please, use whatever services they please, medical, um, emergency services, um, whatever services are available. If, if people could just cross the border, use the services, and then get out or stay if they please, then the world would be a completely different place than it is now. Completely. What immigration laws do, they safeguard a country. When a country is able to determine who they allow to enter, there is a higher probability of that individual being a productive member of society rather than being a leech, a criminal 
who is contributing nothing to society. And this is why I believe it's a common sense issue when it comes to immigration. When it comes to immigration reform and actually enforcing the law. Why is there such an issue in enforcing the law? It's a cold day in hell, brothers and sisters. When you have to try to persuade your fellow Americans and fellow Canadians to follow the law. And it's not to say that this law is racist. It's not to say that this law is oppressive. This law is common sense. And so we're going to look at the executive order. Obviously not the whole thing for the for the sake of time. But we're going to look at the purpose. And that's in section one. It says interior enforcement of our nation's immigration laws is critically important to the national security and public safety of the United States. Many aliens who illegally enter the United States and those who overstay or otherwise violate the terms of their visas present a significant threat to national security and public safety. This is particularly so for aliens who engage in criminal conduct in the United States. And it goes on to say, in regards to sanctuary jurisdictions, across the United States willfully violate federal law in an attempt to shield aliens from removal from the United States. These jurisdictions have caused immeasurable harm to the American people and to the very fabric of our republic. And what, what, what many people fail to realize that the, the, the United States of America is more of a republic than it is a democracy. And we fail to realize that it is a land that is uh, governed by the rule of law. And we have these sanctuary cities that willfully want to circumvent the law in an attempt to rebel against the president of the United States. And in this executive order, there is a priority list of who will be uh, subject to deportation. So the enforcement priorities, it's found in Section 5. Section Alpha says, have been convicted of criminal offenses. This is very the very first uh, on the priority list. Those who have been convicted of any criminal offenses. B says, have been charged with any criminal offense where such charge has not been resolved. C says, have committed acts that constitute a chargeable criminal offense. D says, have engaged in fraud or willful misrepresentation in connection with any official matter or application before a governmental agency. Uh, E says, have abused any program related to receipt of public benefits. Listen, folks, and it, it continues. Listen, it baffles me that there is so much opposition to such a common sense document, to such common sense enforcement. The only reason that I could see individuals on the left fighting against this is simply in opposition of President Donald Trump. Sim- simply because of the animosity that these individuals hold towards him is why they would have sanctuary cities and why they would want to oppose this bill and this executive order. That's the only, that is the only reason why I can see people would possibly be against this. And so Attorney General Jeff Sessions stated today that actions will be taken against these sanctuary cities. If you aren't going to follow federal law, if you're going to willfully circumvent the law, then how could you possibly expect to receive federal money? I don't understand. And so even 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 with the the uh, possibility, the very real possibility of of losing federal funds to these cities, some of them say, you know what, we're going to lose the money, but we're still not going to enforce these laws. We're still not going to help ICE agents with the deportation of illegal immigrants who have criminal records, who have violent criminal records, who have harmed Americans. They aren't even supposed to be in this country, but they've violently harmed Americans. We are not going to help you with the enforcement of these immigration laws. It's baffling to me. 
at what point do you say, you know, it's not about my animosity for the president. It's not about my animosity for the Republican Party. Sometimes you have to just step back and say, this is for the betterment of the country. A country needs borders for the protection of its citizens. Why is it that these individuals are so adamant about circumventing the law of the land? The law is completely just. President Donald Trump is completely correct in wanting to enforce these laws. These are basic laws of any country. Do you think that you can go to Mexico and stay there and overstay your visit and leech off of their social programs? Do you think that you can go to any country and do that? No, you can't. And this is why, again, President Donald Trump was elected president. America wants to police the world. America wants to save the world. And so much money is leaving the country. So many businesses are leaving the country. And President Donald Trump says, no, it's time to put America back. And in Canada with Justin Trudeau, I have a feeling that Canadians will soon put into office someone who wants to put Canada first. The financial burden that our generosity is costing taxpayers is becoming unbearable. And it baffles me that we want to be so generous and so charitable to people outside of our country when there are so many suffering on the streets of our own country. Thanks for listening. May it be our objective to be objective. Have a good night.